All right, welcome everyone. Uh, all right, I think I've got it. Um, there's Abby. Hi, Abby. All right, well, welcome everybody. Sorry, it's taking us a minute here. A little, little technological, you know, the usual. But here we are. And why don't I go ahead and open the meeting? So, uh, welcome everyone to the December 2nd, 2021 Town of Concord Historic Districts Commission meeting. Uh, we're being, we're calling the meeting to order at 7.03 p.m. by my clock. The commission will review one continuance and we have two new applications this evening and some additional business at the end of the meeting. Uh, let me do a quick roll call of the commission. If you would just say aye or wave at me uh, when I say your name, Melinda. Aye. Mia. Aye. Catherine. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Abigail. Aye. And I'm I as well. And the five voting members tonight will be uh, myself, Melinda, Nia, uh, Abigail, and Dennis. Did I do that in the right order? Yes. Sorry to leave you out, Catherine. I know you were looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> but you're off, you're off the hook tonight. All right, so we're conducting the meeting online in accordance with the Commonwealth of Mass, exec, the, the continued executive order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law. The public may access this call through both telephone and video conferencing. <clears throat> Pardon me. Members of the public will have an opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment on applications and discussions following the petitioner's presentation and questions from the commission to do so. Please raise your hand in the participant function of the Zoom meeting platform. If you're calling in and can't use the platform, you may raise your hand by dialing star nine or just wave at us and we'll see you. Uh, our host, uh, Heather, will uh, mute microphones, but if you would please mute yourself if you're not speaking, that would be super helpful just to remove the chatter. And uh, aside from the host, the current petitioner and the commissioners will all stay live. Uh, once the application has been presented, I'll call on each commissioner for comments. Then we'll open the meeting to public comment. Once there are no more public comments, we'll bring it back for a motion to continue, approve, approve with conditions or disapprove a second and we'll do a roll call vote. And once the commission has voted on an application, the petitioner is free to leave the meeting. So with that, I think we can get started. So we've got a small group tonight in honor of the coming holidays, I think. And all right, so we've only got a few things on the agenda tonight. I know um, our continuance is 71 Lowell Road, the, the uh, military project. Uh, I know DSK is here to do a little presentation. That's our continuance. The new public hearings are uh, sculptures at the Millbrook Terry area. And then we have a, a chimney cap approval. So, because of the way these things run, we can't start certain things till certain times. But what I don't want to happen is uh, this uh, poor folks who have come to have chimney caps approved have to stay till you know nine o'clock to wait for their chimney caps. I don't think that's going to happen. So what I'd like to do is start with the continuance. Uh, we'll go through that. And I think we may have to pause because we have to actually skip ahead to look at the sculptures, that application, which sort of affects the first one. So we're gonna jump around a little bit. If we get to 7.20, I may pause us for a minute just so we can um, uh, approve the chimney caps because I think that's gonna be a, a sort of five minute discussion. But let's see how things are going. Does that make sense? I know we're leaping around a little bit there. Am I still coloring inside the lines, Heather? Okay. So I think, why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, I know we've got um, uh, the folks from DSK are here. I know Tom and Andy are here. And hi, Tom. Hi, Andy. Um, Good evening, everybody. 
Hello. Do you want to, did you, you got caught window what I'm doing there, Tom. I, I know it's a little bit funny tonight, but sure. do you want to go through the, what you've presented and then we'll sort of see where we are? Yeah, well, I'm we'll, um, happy to follow your lead. We're prepared to, um, uh, for the um, 71 Lowell Road project, address just, just a few points that we thought were brought up last time. And then uh, be, you know, obviously available for any any questions that the commission may have. And um, then I'm uh, happy to take the lead on the the next uh, presentation and discussion for the sculpture. So okay, I'll so just I'll follow your lead on that. I think that's great. So Tom, wh why don't you go ahead and go through the 71 Lowell material, and then sure. see if there are any other questions, and then we'll we'll keep going. Sure, absolutely. So uh, thanks, everybody. Nice uh, to be with you all. I'm joined uh, by my colleague, Andy Smith. And uh, nice to be on camera this time. Last time I was dealing with a tooth issue. So uh, uh, thanks for helping me through that. Um, we, this is our fourth appearance. And um, we're pleased to come back and talk to you about uh, 71 Little Road and the transformation of Walgreens. We uh, feel that um, last time there were at least um, three themes that came up for us to address. One was the facade facing the Millbrook. Another one was um, uh, described as the monolithic nature of the horizontal lines. And then I think there was also some discussion about circulation, just clarifying circulation. So we thought we would just put together just a couple of slides to address um, those issues. And I'd like uh, to just ask Andy if he could walk us through those, if that's okay. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, Andy Smith, 167 Hayward Mill Road in Concord. And I will share my screen here. Let's see if we can get this going here. Andy, you're so good to remember to say your address. You don't even have to do that because you're a presenter. I'm just so proud, you know, that I'm from Concord. I'm here tonight. <laughs> happy to be in. You know, I'm a, a native uh, Concord, Concordian, uh, whatever the right term is. So, um, yeah, I just want to you know, say it every time. Uh, now everybody knows where I live, so <laughs> any issues. Um, all right, so the screen is good. You can see yeah. it. Great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like uh, Tom was just saying, uh, we just wanted to hit on a couple um, key points. Um, you know, I think we did the bulk of our presentation last time, got some really great feedback. And, um, you know, just wanted to kind of respond to a couple of those things. Uh, one of which I think uh, came up was just <clears throat> getting an understanding of general circulation through the site, pedestrian access. Um, you know, we had submitted the, the kind of underlay diagram or uh, plan of the site uh, kind of local to the, the new project in one of our previous application uh, PDFs that we had submitted. So this is just kind of outlining some key routes here Kai's Road on the left, Lowell Road on the right, um, <clears throat> general pedestrian circulation happening along Kai's Road that is now um, really uh, more engaged uh, with this new design to kind of pull people into the site. Um, <clears throat> I think we also had like a little gravel path that would go across the, the lawn space here uh, on the left of the building that would kind of pull you in. So primary circulation shown in red uh, really kind of strengthening that connection between the two. And I think, um, you know, right now you, you can do that walk now. I'm not sure how many people actually make do that walk uh, across. And, and of course, you're kind of going around the backside of the Walgreens and there's a loading dock and it's not a great experience. Um, so now I, I feel like with this project, we're really going to be strengthening that circulation path um, and providing some um, you know, nicer places to stop and go into the, the retail tenants and a little more green space along the way uh, and really kind of activate <clears throat> the Kai's Road side of things, which is which was our intention. Um, you know, with that and the, the parallel parking, trying to make this really feel like it's engaged with the road as much as possible. Um, and then we have a kind of a secondary circulation, this purple line, just, you know, showing you getting up onto the upper landing, uh, that kind of elevated path, and then down and around into the, into the market. And um, and reconnecting back to Lowell Road again. So <clears throat> here's kind of a zoomed in, just showing you that kind of path going that way. There's some questions about service as well, I think, and understanding how this kind of upper, this raised deck of the restaurant works with some of that circulation. So 
primary circulation is in purple. That's where most of the people are gonna be traveling and they're gonna go in the market. They're gonna come out, go up the steps, go to the, or up the ramp, um, go to the shops over here uh, and you go over to the restaurant. So really the restaurant is kind of a little bit isolated. I think there are questions about, you know, you know, uh, <clears throat> the um, alcohol rules and laws for separation of, of those spaces for a restaurant. So it's really not kind of on the main circulation path or they're gonna be able to kind of um, section that area off pretty easily. Um, service still kind of remains here in the green. So loading area, uh, getting into a service corridor in the back of the building, but then still kind of allowing for that uh, slipping of service circulation around that that deck there so there's there's a bit of separation there and andy maybe maybe point out we have uh accessible ramps on both ends of the porch or just correct yeah so we've got a, a a true ramp over here on the left side um i think we were you know we're probably not uh, it may not have necessarily been needed i think we're right on the cusp of the the overall distance that we needed but it's always better to have them than not um, so we have one on the, the west side here, and or I guess it's kind of southwest, um, and one on this upper is going to be more of a graded path, kind of like what's there now. So it doesn't have the, the handrails and doesn't have all that. If we keep it under the um, four percent, I think we can uh, we can we can manage that and get up to that level. So that's just kind of like a, a quick overview. I, I don't I don't know if that answers all questions re regarding circulation, but hopefully that provides a little bit of clarity there. All right, I'll, I'll keep moving on. Let's, let's keep moving. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, uh, there were some questions and just comments about uh, that monumental horizontal facade um, that were brought up last time. So what we did in this um, view, and I've got a 3D view where we just kind of located the general location of where the signage would go. Um, just some quick dash boxes. We're not applying for signage right now. We don't know what it's going to look like yet until we figure out what the tenants are. Um, but just trying to at least get that in our minds as to where they're they're happening, and um, and so you get kind of a sense of how this this upper parapet kind of gets broken up a little bit. It's not quite the the big gray band that we had before. It's it's going to have some lighting. It's going to have signage. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of the three D view. Um, you know, something over on this side so that you're, you see it from Kai's Road, something on this side so you see it from the parking lot and you know what the store is and, um, you know, up to three signs probably in the middle, depending on how those tenant spaces get fit out. And I think the key point here is that, um, you know, if I look at this view here, you know, when you look at the market, it's, it's a pretty broad long uh, facade and um, you don't necessarily really perceive that in real life you know you're seeing it at, at down at eye level you're looking up at it you, you're walking underneath the, the, the canopy that's down here and you're not really perceiving the length of this and you know we're a little bit shorter than that but it's kind of the same idea where you're, you're not really in 3d you're going to be in real life going to be perceiving that uh, head-on like you're seeing in our elevation views you're, you're going to be yeah it's maybe <clears throat> Yeah. Maybe two, maybe two thirds of the length of the the actual market um, Eve line, so it it feels like it might uh, be comfortable in scale. And we also compared that to some of the Eve lines on Main Street, and uh, there's a there's a combination of flat roofs there as well as very shallow pitch roofs. I mean, there's there's a combination of hips and gables, flats, and single pitch roofs on Main Street. So you do have you know a, a kind of wide variety, but many of them read as they're either flat or or seemingly flat because the, the pitch is so shallow. So this just seems like it could be a nice complement to the, the vernacular of what we see in, in the town center. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then I think the last page um, this is just kind of a quick presentation here, but um, uh, the other one of the other comments was about the, the Millbrook side of the building. And <clears throat> I think it's kind of the same concept where in our elevations, looking at it on the flat, looks really like a long expanse of wood siding and um, looks maybe, you know, not super interesting, but I think these are kind of the views shown, um, you know, with leaves and without leaves of what you can actually see. And I think from, from Kai's road, it's, you're either seeing it through the trees and it's rather obscured, um, or by the time you get to the, the curb cut over here in the bottom right, you're not really seeing the back of that facade uh, at all. And, um, and I think with the materials that we're going with that are going to soften this building quite a bit, um, 
will really blend in with the nature around it. So I think that's kind of the idea is that the, the kind of um, weathered wood tones of the, the proposed siding will blend in with the nature around it. And we'll, you know, you're not even gonna see as much as you're seeing now where you get this kind of cream colored block appearing in the woods. That's gonna kind of disappear a bit more. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I think we just kind of want to yeah. hit on some of those things. Tom, I don't know if you had any other points to make. The other, the only other, you know, small point I just wanted to reinforce was that uh, any of the exterior lighting that uh, would be employed in the in the base building design uh, would be the same or as similar as possible to what's already been approved at the market in terms of the down lights and uh, et cetera. And including that uh, the strip sign light that we've had approved at the market, we would use something that would be uh, equal, the same, you know, dark sky compliant, uh, you know, rather subtle uh, signage lighting as well. And we'll uh, come back uh, for the signage application. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, gents. Um, Thank my, you. Only, my only quick follow-up question, I know there, and forgive me if this has already been answered, there was a comment from one of the neighbors about um, mechanical equipment uh, noise and and it, how, how is that being addressed again? Just to, I think you mentioned some sound isolation of the equipment, but could you refresh my memory? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Andy, you wanna talk about sure. that? Yeah, so I think, um, and the owner is uh, working with um, a sound engineer and um, is working through the Board of Health as well um, to remedy that. So there is a process that's underway um, through uh, that separate kind of path through the Board of Health um, to address some of those issues, but they are being addressed yeah. in, a, in a separate manner. Uh, our, our, our general strategy is that we've got roof mounted equipment that's on the, the Kai's Road side of that gable that exists. Uh, and so that should do a, a really nice job in shielding. We'll also have some screening and acoustical screening around that equipment. But uh, I just think that general location should should be really helpful. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, well, I why don't I go, let's go around and see what folks, if folks have any other questions. Let me just go around to the commission. Thank you, Andy and Tom. Uh, I'm just going to go in order on my screen. Melinda, any thoughts, questions? I have no questions. I think it's fine. Okay, thank you. Catherine. Um, no further questions, but I do really appreciate the addition of the, the skylights along the um, roof line. And I think it does nicely break up that horizontal line. So um, I think it's looking very good. Thank you. Okay, Abby. Um, so I just wanted to review um, exterior lighting um, for a bit, um, just because that was an issue, obviously, that we came across with the market. Um, so walk me through. So obviously, we can't deal with the sign, light it, sign lighting this evening because we don't actually have applications for signage yet. Um, but you anticipate having overhead downlights on each of the signs at either gable end and across the band, is that correct? Yeah, I would assume so, that's, yes. That, that's, that's what we assume, yeah. We, we had, I thought maybe a little bit of reflection if it's okay on that. We had a really good discussion about that on the market on the two gable ends and ended up, you know, uh, looking outward uh, across the whole road saying not there, let's, you know, focus it inward and into the site. And so, you know, I think we would, we're gonna have that kind of discussion, I would suspect. Okay. Um, and then in terms of other exterior lighting, um, Heather, can you pull up the, um, the nighttime renderings? Um, what sort of, I, I mean, we have the lights, obviously the internal lights, um, and there's some spillage from that, but are you adding additional bollards or any other wayfinding lights in terms of on the path? You've got a new gravel path. You've got um, you know, a couple new pedestrian access points. And I just want to go over um, sure, where there's sure. new lighting on that. I would say that in, in, the, in the porch area, we would plan to use a similar downlight that we used in the market porch that we all talked about quite a bit. And we went there at night and really looked at it to make sure it was going to be, you know, a soft glow and without a lot of spillage. So I think that within that porch zone, it would be a, a strategy similar uh, to that. The site lighting, 
our our goal here is to use the 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 lights that were approved as part of the, the general plan last time in the for all the open spaces and to um, uh, use something similar. You know, I don't think there's an addition of a new fixture type that I can think of. Andy, uh, do you think of any applications like that? And we have our general overhead uh, site lighting with cutoffs to make sure there's no spillage. And I think we would be doing something similar. Right. So yeah. one, my one area of concern is in looking at the renderings is, is there, it almost appears as if there's some sort of up lighting or some, some lighting on that gable end, the closest one to the market that really illuminates mm -hmm. that upper. Yeah, right there. Can you, can you describe to me what the lighting is in that particular area? So I, I think the idea there is because it's kind of a, um, a feature gable, you've got um, the wood tones on the underside. Um, I think that would be a spot where we would wanna do some very soft up lighting um, in the patio outside of the, the building envelope um, to just illuminate the underside of that. So it's a little bit less of a, um, you're not looking at can lights, you're not looking at anything like that. It's, it's kind of a more of a pure architectural form um, and you're kind of creating some warmth and some, um, some invitation to an entry uh, for a, a space that's kind of a little bit more um, lively, like a like a restaurant, um, and left a little bit yeah. less. <clears throat> yeah, and I guess it's 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 similar maybe to those precedent images that you see the inner portico or porch area that's that feels right. We're, yeah, we're trying to look for a little bit of glow there. With and I understand like lumen levels, try to keep them as low as possible. Uh, keep it as soft as possible, but still kind of highlight that um, the underside of that gable a bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I understand the the, the images that you've gathered, um, you know, from around town, but I think, I think a lot of those, particularly that type of lighting, um, that type of facade lighting, those were approved in a time where we were kind of, I think, generally less sensitive to concerns about light pollution and spillage. Um, like particularly the Christian science seems, seems incredibly bright to me now. Um, and obviously we weren't you know, part of the commission when that was approved, but um, so I do, I do have concerns whenever there's kind of um, additional, I, like I, I agree with you, it's, it's, it's attractive and it's an architectural feature, but um, just because something happens to be visually appealing um, doesn't necessarily make it um, necessary or appropriate um, for the district. I think we're always trying to kind of keep um, mm -hmm. you know, commercial spaces engaging, um, but also be sensitive to the fact that, you know, in a historic district, any kind of additional exterior lighting is always kind of a point of concern. Um, my only- if, other... if, if I may, <laughs> if it's okay, I, I agree with you. And I think that the examples we uh, have shown feel in these photographs overlit. Yeah. And so I think we would want something that was softer. So okay. I, I, I agree with you. Okay. Um, and it was, it's helpful to see the images of the Millbrook side, that long, the service kind of corridor expanse, um, that there's like less of a visual impact there. Is there any opportunity for greening that side of the structure? Um, you know, I see on the you know renderings, we've got some climbing vines on the parking lot side. We've got some uh, some landscaping, obviously the addition of the green area um, on the Kai's Road side, I think is an improvement. Is there any opportunity for any greening there? I realize we've probably got loading docks and all of that, but. Um, yeah. Yeah. There are, yeah, there's a bank of parking, but uh, it is bracketed by two areas where there can be some plant beds on, on, I don't know, Andy, if you went back to your circulation drawing or, oh, I'm sorry, maybe Heather yeah, might this up. Might even be in the one that Heather's got. Well, I can let me share it. Let me get a good plan here. <clears throat> yeah, that that circulation it shows the the parking that essentially exists right now, but it is bracketed by yeah. uh, two areas that are you know there's planting opportunities there. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, because that's always you know an additional concern when we're looking at a more modern structure in the district, which I do, which I do think this design is appropriate um, given the location. Mm -hmm. um, but do you see those, I mean, those, those two zones okay. that, that kind of frame that parking? Yes. I think those are, I think those are zones of opportunity for what you're talking about. Okay. If that, you know, I think that that's, 
I think that that's really important, particularly with a more modern structure. And particularly, mm -hmm. this is a very large commercial property. Um, and I think anything we can do to green the space and to soften it, um, I think is um, a step in the right direction. So my preference would be um, that we would have green and landscaping in that, in that area. Other than that, um, I don't think I have any other outstanding questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Abby, can I just ask a quick follow-up question on, in terms of the lighting of the gable end, um, is your concern primarily uh, dark sky compliant related of, of like sky uh, light spillage or is it the actual illumination of the architecture that's? I think it's both. Um, okay. So I think part of it is is the is the light spillage. Like it just whenever we're illuminating a structure beyond what is you know kind of absolutely necessary, um, I think that's always a concern. And particularly because this is an open property, um, that will be very visible driving down the road. Um, particularly if you're coming, if you turn off of Lowell onto Kai's, I think you'll see that gable end that will be illuminated and quite visible. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also, I think just generally, um, I'm curious to see what my fellow commissioners think. Um, you know, this kind of illumination of, of facades in some areas is quite appropriate and would have been and necessary, um, but I'm, I, I wanna tone it down as much as possible, I think on a site like this where you have a lot of exterior illumination, um, right. you know, just one simple facade. It's multiple facades, it's multiple signs. It's a um, commercial property that's open later into the evening, um, so you've got you've got a lot of light there, um, and I think most of it is is probably appropriate and and necessary or required. Um, but if we can, you know, I think in this day and age, darkening properties to the extent that we can is something that we're kind of trending towards. So, but I'm curious to see what fellow commissioners think. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Abby. Uh, let's just keep going around for a minute. Dennis, what do you think? I don't have any major problems. Uh, <clears throat> I still think the horizontal is horizontal that I was concerned about, but uh, I think it's somewhat improved and I'm not gonna belabor, uh, belabor that point. Um, uh, and uh, to a certain extent, the same way with, with, with the, the Millbrook, which I think is, unfortunately the building that's there is too close to it, but you know, you're trying to deal with it in the best way you can. I just think it's not a very inviting uh, walk along the back of the building and along the, uh, the Millbrook. So uh, uh, other than that, and I think you've pushed it, um, I don't have any problems. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, Nia, last but not least. Um, thank you. Um, I just wanna follow on um, to continue what Abby was saying. Um, yes, we did have concerns with the, when we were um, discussing the market building, we were um, concerned about the lighting. And I know there's been a lot of discussion with this new proposed building that many you're using many of the same fixtures, same idea and whatever. But I guess I, like Abby, am, am conso concerned with the overall amount of light in, the, in this newly um, proposed building. You've got the vertical slats on both the gable and buildings so that'll show a lot of light, I would think, from interior. Plus, you've got the horizontal retail spaces, which, of course, will have glass and a lot of light. So I'm concerned about the amount of light coming from inside that we can't control. And therefore, I think we have to be very, very vigilant for the amount of light that is um, outside and I know you're using the same fixtures similar to the, the the market and things are on dimmers and that sort of stuff but I'm just concerned about the overall amount of light and whether it can be you know tamed as you know as Abby pointed out it's it's one thing um, to say architecturally it's you know very attractive but you know we have always tried, to minimize the amount of light spillage. So that's one um, comment I wanted to make. Also, uh, I know you're coming back for signage, but I would very much want to tie the lighting for signage to that application. I absolutely do not want lights to go in, even if they're on the proposal, 
prior to us getting the signage. Because for example, th that middle section, the horizontal section, you may only end up getting one tenant. So we don't need three signs. So we wouldn't want three lights. So um, that would be my recommendation for that. Um, the view of the horizontal, um, the comparison was given with Main Street. And I would just point out that on Main Street, you never have the ability to step back. The furthest you can step back is across the street. Whereas here, there are multiple places where you step, step back um, considerably to see that horizontal. And likewise, you know, as I, I know you still don't believe me, but um, you know, you can step back quite a long way and see all the equipment on top of the roof. Mm -hmm. You can't see that from up close, but there, there are multiple places where you can see what I call the uglies. Right. So the, the, the perspective is quite different for this building than it is for Main Street. Um, in terms of uh, circulation, uh, do you anticipate that the parking on the um, Millbrook side, that that would be um, just staff um, parking? Or I noticed your circulation didn't include the backside of the bu building and there are a number of parking, parking spots. Um, is that yeah. anticipated to be not for the public? Uh, that is the way the site is permitted now for the, you know, the first phase market phase. I think there's going to be a, uh, one or more sessions with the planning board, mm -hmm. uh, to work out, you know, the composition of parking and, and who's where and how does, you know, this plan impact it. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that is, I mean, that has been a kind of designated staff parking zone, um, uh, from the the last approved application, uh, I think that there'll be some, certainly some planning board conversations about that. I don't know if we know much more about that right now. Okay. You know, if um, it's strictly staff or there could be some some blend depending on our overall parking counts and the, uh, you know, the requirements in, in each category. Right. And um, as far as you're aware, all the, the dumpsters and that kind of stuff are gonna be, um, screened and not visible from the public way. Is, is, am I correct that, there? That, that is correct. Okay. I mean, I think it's a great project. I mean, I just, I'm just being a nervous Nelly about the lighting. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, uh, we uh, appreciate your comments the, about the lighting. And that's one of the reasons we employed that, that louver screen was to diffuse the light that's coming from within the retail spaces to kind of, that is one of the, and the, the larger overhang um, yeah. that we did on one of the gables is just for what you're talking about. So we're not okay. at, uh, planning to add a lot of supplemental exterior light, but but soften the light that's coming from within, but still give enough visibility where the businesses can be successful. Right. So okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for those comments. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Uh, Tom and Andy, I have one other question. So the drawings we looked at are those conceptual design drawings, the, the architectural drawings? What uh, I would, uh, are we at? We, uh, we would be at um, a kind of early DD, you know, it's, a, it's kind of halfway through the process. Okay, and the reason I ask is that, that the way this has gone over the last several years with larger projects, I think what we've sort of off the books have decided to start doing is checking in at the end of each phase just to make sure we're all still on the same page and there aren't any big changes that we don't understand. So um, I guess I just want the commission to understand that what we're approving tonight is essentially a design development package. So it's not the final construction documents, not everything has been worked out, dimensions, details, all that kind of stuff. So things may mm -hmm. still change a little bit, it, you know, things will develop. And I think what, what we'd like to do, Tom and Andy, is to ask the team to come back at some point just to update us. And maybe that's, mm -hmm. you know, toward the end of CDs. In other words, not a whole big formal presentation, more just an sure. update. Sure, Where, yeah, we can, we can let you know if certain things have evolved. And yeah, that would be really helpful. Cause, because you've, you know, you've know, you've seen it from the other side, we've got caught a couple of times approving something that was basically conceptual 
and then mm -hmm. really not checking in until it was too late. So, so Peter, in the, in that uh, with that approach, would you be in a position to issue a uh, certificate of appropriateness with the condition of that we would come back as with an update? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Heather, wait, Heather's yeah, in that the condition that you come back um, with your full construction drawings would be that the commission reviews and approves those at that time. Um, to make sure that there aren't any significant changes. Okay, would that, does that make sense, Tom, Andy? Okay. Yeah, sure, it does. Okay, all right, uh, I have no further uh, useful input at this point. So uh, why don't we open it up? Did I hear from all the commissioners? I believe we did. Uh, why don't we open up for uh, public comment? Is there public comment on the presentation here for 71 Lowell Road, the Millbrook Terry uh, project? I hear crickets. Anybody raising their hand, Heather? Don't see anybody. Okay, so this is where I'm going to pause because we technically can't take a vote until we look at the sculptures. So we even need Heather to if we're in the meeting. Do I need? Do we need a continuance? No, you can just say okay. we're going to pause and come back to it in this. So meeting. Tom, Andy, does that make sense? We're going to pause for a minute here. And actually, if I can beg your indulgence, I'm going to jump ahead. And I see Sandra is here, um, and I'd like to take out of order the um, chimney caps at 245, 249, 255 Lexington. Uh, Sandra, would you mind jumping ahead on the agenda here? Oh, you're muted, though. We can't hear you. That's fine. There you are. Okay, thank <laughs> you. I just, I just want to make sure you don't have to wait around because we're going to have a longer discussion. Um, would you mind just walking us through this application um, briefly, and then we can... Uh, take a look at it. Okay, Sandra Shada, 249 Lexington Road. We at the Benjamin Barron Condominium seek permission to install two chimney caps and replace two existing chimney toppers. And this is to address an issue with leaks and also the ongoing deterioration of our chimneys from weather patterns and acid rain. Other um, historic homes along the American Mile have caps in place. Ours would be um, gel co stainless steel with baked on powdered black paint. And I have submitted a photo of the design for the new caps and I've submitted descriptions and photos of the four chimneys as seen from the sidewalk. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, I have no questions. Let me just go around and see if the commission has any questions. By the way, the photo right there is that that's the existing uh, uh, chimney cap that's on there, right? The Met Guard or something? It's the Animal Mesh Guard, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Melinda, any com questions? No questions. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Any questions? Muted. Uh, no, I think it's an improvement from the, what's there now. Okay, thank you. Nia, any thoughts? Uh, no, we've approved this kind of uh, cap before. I, like Dennis, think it's an improvement and the baked on powdered black, I think, you know, we'll screen it nicely and uh, go for it. Thank you, Nia. Catherine, any thoughts? Um, I agree. I think it, it looks like it will be a great improvement. All good. And Abby, our chimney goddess, last but not least. <laughs> um, no, no objection. This is this is a, um, a remedy to a situation that we encounter often in the district, and we've approved this type of chimney cap and, and have determined that it's appropriate for um, this type of location. So um, I have no objection. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there any public comment on the replacement of chimney caps at the address referenced above, 245, 249, 255 Lexington Road? Uh, let me see, none. All right, uh, I'm going to bring it back. Could I please have a motion from the commission? I move that we approve the application for 245, 249, 255 Lexington Road to replace and install chimney caps as proposed. Second. 
And second, and I'm just going to go around if you give me your vote, Melinda. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Mia. Aye. Uh, Catherine. Aye. And Abigail. Aye. And I'm an aye as well. Sandra, you're approved, and good luck getting the work done. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, thank you. All right, and thank you to all at the meeting for letting me um, massacre the agenda there a little bit. All right, so Tom and Andy, we're back. Uh, if you <laughs> would be so kind, could we jump to the 71 Lowell Road application? And if you could walk us through that, I'd appreciate it. Uh, is this for, for the sculptures? Oh, sorry, 77 Lowell Road. Did I say 71? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's yes, great. the sculptures. Yes, great, great. Well, okay, thank you so much. Um, we would like to request a certificate of appropriateness for a period of two years, renewable at that time for two sculptures uh, that are located along uh, Lowell Road. And uh, we did submit an application and uh, a, uh, the provenance of the sculptures as well as uh, the photographs. Uh, I think that should all be in your package and Heather has up on uh, the screen. The uh, uh, two sculptures, uh, by David Lang, and uh, there's a narrative, so I won't go through that in great detail, uh, but there's two David Lang sculptures that are on loan uh, to uh, the owner of the property um, and that have been placed in this position uh, without a permanent foundation. They're on a gravel bed with a couple of simple ground anchors just to keep them from tipping over, but there's no, there's no foundation under them. And um, we um, are available to answer any questions you may have. Um, David Lang's widow, uh, Kathleen, um, has loaned those to Jim and Elizabeth. Uh, and you know, they're uh, two wonderful uh, pieces. Um, the, the Pegasus with uh, Belleroff and uh, riding Pegasus and the Easter duck uh, uh, to, <laughs> to, to, to yeah, two uh, uh, really beautiful pieces, I think. So I'm uh, happy to talk about the, these pieces in more detail, but maybe uh, Peter, let us know how to be most yeah, helpful. No, I think you're, I thank you, Tom. I think, I think frankly, this was a, a, a bit of a big misunderstanding. I think we just assumed they were permanent foundations, which they're not, which I didn't realize. No. Uh, so the, these are temporary installations uh, there, you're asking for a, a time period. So we do approve uh, temporary art installations. And frankly, I think the world needs more art in it. So I've just tipped my hand, but let me, uh, let me go around and see what the commission thinks. I think this is a pretty straightforward ask. Melinda, what do you think? I like them very much, actually. I think it's a, a great asset. It's a nice, um, what's the word I want? Um, contemporary, uh, nuance to the uh, more historical uh, style of the of the building and I like it very much. Okay, thank you. Catherine, what do you think? I completely agree that the world does need more art in it. So I think it's great. <laughs> thank you. Nia, what do you think? Um, I'll say right up front, this is way outside of my skill set. Um, <laughs> so Everybody's entitled to an opinion with art, remember. That's right. I guess when I look at these, I, you know, normally you think in a historic district, you would like something, you know, more traditional, but given that we welcomed the contemporary aspects of the uh, market building, uh, I love that aspect of market building, and I think these echo that. I think materials are appropriate, and I think for a period of two, two years, it would, it would be good. Thanks, Nia. Dennis? I think they're great. I think they add a little bit of zip. I think the uh, historic area can get to be a little um, twee, as they say in England. Uh, so I Precious. think it's nice to have, uh, have a little bit of edge. Uh, does this also cover the snowman and the Christmas tree, or are they coming down sooner? <laughs> I think they'll come down a little sooner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Dennis. Abby, any thoughts? So, so I'll be the slightly Debbie Downer in the group. Um, 
I don't have any issue with them. I don't think that's a great location for them on the site. Um, they're, in my opinion, kind of wedged in between the building and the sidewalk, um, and they're not given enough space for their full expression. Um, and I wonder if in reconsidering the now hideous Walgreens building, which will at one point be quite attractive, um, if at that point in the two years when this comes up for review, if it wouldn't be advantageous to possibly relocate them to one of the larger open green spaces, maybe on the Kai's Road side, something along those lines. I just want to kind of put the bug in your ear that there may be a, a, a more interesting and more appropriate location on the site for these than where they, I think, have been kind of shoehorned in right now. I'm not going to object to their to the approval of where they are currently, um, but I think they might be um, shown off to their best advantage on a different location on the property, particularly the green space on the Kai's Road side. They might be quite attractive there, so where they have more space to breathe. So that's just my my two cents. Okay, got it. Thank you, Abby. Uh, all right, and I have no further things to add. So let's see if there's any public comment on the application for two sculptures to be temporarily installed uh, at 77 Lowell Road uh, for a period of two years. And I'm looking to see if there are any questions from the public. Uh, Why don't you let me... Looking for hands. Any hands, Heather? All right, if I could uh, bring it back to the commission for a uh, for a motion, please. All right. Sorry, Peter, can I just add one thing? There was, I noticed in the application that there was a question as to whether we had um, kind of um, uh, purview or control over this type of installation on the property. So I just wanted to clarify that it's within the historic district, it's visible from a public way and it's a structure. And by definition, our structures are a combination of materials other than a building sign or billboard. Um, and I think that meets that definition entirely. So I think we do have purview here. So I just want to clarify that for the record. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the record. Uh, all right, could I still have a motion from someone? I just can't make the motion. Uh, I move that we approve the application for 77 Lowell Road uh, to install two uh, David Lang sculptures for a period of two years to be uh, reviewed uh, at the end of that period. I'll second it. Thank you. And let me go around for a roll call vote. Melinda? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Uh, Nia? Aye. Dennis? Aye. Abby? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. All right, so Tom and Andy are approved there. Um, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. To, uh, to Jim and company. All right, so uh, with that piece of business closed, let's go back to the 71 Lowell Road application. So uh, we've seen the presentation. I think I think we understand this is a essentially a design uh, package where we're uh, approving or not approving tonight or commenting on. Uh, and that will come back later to look at a, a construction documents package to check in. Um, are there any final questions? I guess I'm looking to the commission uh, and not everyone's here tonight, but for folks here tonight, any last lingering questions or concerns you have for the design team before we go ahead and, and uh, take action? Uh, if you would just wave at me, because I don't want to go around. If you, I know you're all excited to ask more questions here. Nia, did you have a question? No. Okay, I think we're, I think we're okay uh, to go to public comment. So uh, thank you again, Tom and Andy. Why don't we open up? And... <laughs> was that your, was that the baby? No, I have... sent her to bed. <laughs> <laughs> we nearly escaped. <laughs> Uh, all right, sorry. Uh, so is there any public comment on the application for 71 Lowell Road? This is a certificate of appropriateness to uh, renovate the existing retail building and I won't go into detail 
Uh, it's an extensive renovation, as you've seen materials presented over uh, the last few weeks, several weeks. And um, just wanted to see if there's any public comment from the folks here tonight. So I'm gonna look for hands from the participants. Don't see any hands, Heather, any hands? All right, so let's bring it back to the commission. And if I could beg one of you to make a motion on the 71 Lowell Road uh, present project. Uh, Peter, I'd be happy to, but you might have to help me with uh, the correct language as, okay. uh, you know, edit as we go along. Um, I move that we approve the application for 71 Lowell Road to renovate, renovate the existing retail building with a new in exterior envelope, new storefront on entries and roof overhangs, a new metal roof and new chimney, a new deck, trellis, pergola, outdoor fireplace and masonry acoustic wall, new walkways, sidewalks, stairs, steps, steps and ramps, new exterior lighting, enlarged uh, dumpster enclosure, new on-site and on-street parking spaces, relocated transformer, other associated landscape changes um, with the understanding that these are uh, preliminary doc preliminary design documents is that I wouldn't say preliminary I would say the, they're they're they are design doc design drawings and design that, drawings uh, and that at the appropriate time uh, you will come back to us with um, final construction documents for review and approval. Um, and I would also like to exclude um, the lighting for the signage uh, so, so that that is submitted at the time of, of signage uh, application. Sorry, that's a little bit gobbledygook. I, I think that captures, does that make sense to you, Heather? I think we captured everything there process-wise. Tom, Andy, does that make sense, that motion? To come back at yes. this. Uh, yep, I think that's exactly what Does we that sound about, about right? You. Yes, yep. thank you. Yes. All right, thank you, Nia. We've got a motion. I just need a second. Second. All right, and let's go around and do a roll call vote. Melinda. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Nia. Aye. Catherine. Aye. Abigail. Aye. And I'm an I as well. So you are approved, Tom and Andy. Thank you for your patience and for all the good presentations and the site visit. Um, it's a good process we go through here, I think. Yeah, so, absolutely. Thank you to everybody for right, your attention. We look forward to uh, how the project goes along and please do let Heather know if anything comes up um, and we'll see you when you get to CDs. Thanks everybody. Thank you very really much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you all. Take care. Bye. All right, so we are, do we have any new uh, business before the other business, Heather? No, we did have a last minute um, addition to other business. I'm not sure if you saw that, 98 Monument Street. I did see something. Uh, so why don't we jump into other business? Um, should we do the, do you, do you mind in, in which order we do these in, Heather? I believe Melanie is here for 98 Monument Street. Well, why don't we go ahead and do that one first? Hi, thank you. I, Melanie and Adam are both here. He's just behind me. Um, and unfortunately this was a little bit last minute so we don't have Marshall or our builder on this call. Um, but hopefully you remember that in May, we were granted a, cer a certificate of appropriateness for our renovation at 98 Monument Street. Monument Street and that entailed rebuilding the center section of our house and then adding some dormers and windows to the back part of the front of our house. And I can show pictures too, if you need um, to remember this. So about half of the house is gonna have new, new roof. Um, and in our application, we had submitted and you approved just a timber lined HD 30 year shingle to match existing house. So after realizing we don't realize, we don't know how old the rest of the roof is, and we're gonna guess it's well past its useful life. And since we're only replacing a portion of a use, or portion of our window, or our roof, sorry, um, we knew it would be kind of weirdly colored. 
Um, so we are looking to redo the entire roof of our house. More importantly, we are hoping you allow us to change the color from what is currently a weathered wood color to a charcoal. And so we have been talking about this last week with our architect and our builder. And after looking at some houses around town, we think this is actually more in line with what white houses with black shutters have as mm -hmm. kind of the style right now. And Concord Academy is a good example of it used across Main Street there. So the so the request is to change is to reshingle the whole house and change the color from the yeah. kind of yeah. basically to get, get on an even keel for the roof and maintenance going forward. So while we're rebuilding the middle section, do the whole thing. Right. Oh so mm -hmm. in 2000, you know, summer 2022, when it's <laughs> all done, yeah, we have we know we can give we know at one date we've got a 20-year life or a 30-year life on a roof and we can, we can sort of get off from the same starting point for the entire right. home. So we sent Heather Carey um, pictures of the house and a spec of the shingle we are hoping to get approved. Do we have those, Heather? Yep. There we are. Yep. Okay. So that's the shingle, that's the charcoal or charcoal color. Um, and we have what's what our builder calls weathered wood right now. Yeah. Um, which is a, a brownish. It's mixed color. with a little bit of moss as well for. Yes. So this like is the actual house. moss. Yeah. <laughs> yes, like actual moss. So it's for character. So from this picture that the center section is what's being torn down and that back dormer um, on the picture on the right and the bottom, the back windows become a few more windows with more dormers. So that's the part that's going to definitely be replaced. Um, so yeah. we think it's just. From the, the chimney to the red barn. Right. So I think it's best just to do everything and then update the color so it's a little bit more in style with the rest of Concord. And would the, the, house. Ba the barn stay the same? No, nope, everything would just be one fluent color. So we want it to be not spotty. We want it to look as though this house was erected. We're, you know, eventually I think part of the plan would also be because we're having that midsection done anew is to also incorporate a fresh paint on the whole building just to make it seamless and look sort of, you know, sure. as, though, as though it's all from one period. We know when it was painted last, we know when the roof was put on last, et cetera. Okay, and, uh, and Marshall has blessed this new color? Yes. As your, your yeah. design, design guru, okay. Um, Okay, I I don't have any questions. Uh, why don't I just go see what the what the commission thinks? Um, uh, let me go around in reverse order. Abby, any thoughts, comments? No, oh, you're muted though. Can't hear you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Can't hear you. <laughs> All right, we'll go on to the next person I do have to <laughs> write, write, send her comments in by fax uh dennis um i think it's fine i actually like the gray better than the wood colors yeah. roof anyway so i i think it's fine no, thank you no we're excited to actually change it to something that may be more appealing from the street yeah the, you know it's one of these questions of how faux do you get and i think the faux wood looks like faux wood uh, so I think the I think the, the shingles look like shingles. And that's fine. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Be proud Nina? of who you are, shingles. <laughs> um, I'm fine to redo the whole roof. Uh, I'm sure charcoal is fine. Just one uh, out of interest: is charcoal the one that reads black, or does it actually oh. read gray? The light. It's a, it it's has a, a shine of gray in sunlight. Um, it, it wouldn't be like mark, you know, magic marker, Sharpie black. Right. Okay. It could have a little bit of sheen to it and, and to, as charcoal itself does it in certain lights. Right. So okay. It's sort of, and it, it's a good example because I drove around and what I'm realizing is that our weathered wood is sort of non-existent on Monument Street, lower monument anymore anyways. And, uh, the Concord Academy seems to have, they've done a few upgrades, but their roofs all look perfectly 
in symmetry with each yeah. other and they're all that charcoal color. Okay, yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Nia. You. Melinda? I think it's perfectly fine and the appropriate time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And you've got a roofer, so there, that's a bonus. Yes. Before it snows, yeah, hopefully. Uh, thank you, Melinda. Catherine? Um, I think it's perfectly fine as well. I think it will look good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and Abby, I guess you're going to have to give us a... Oh, there you are. I'm back. We're having technical difficulties. Okay. <laughs> um, I have no objection. I think it's appropriate. Okay, and I have no objection either. So, uh, Heather, do we need a motion and a, to approve this, or what do we do? Yes. Okay. Can I just get a motion from, there's no public comment though, right? This is other business. Okay, so somebody could just make a motion and we'll we'll move along. I move that we amend the, uh, the, the, the certificate of appropriateness for 98 Monument Street uh, to redo the entire roof as opposed to a portion of the roof with a new color um, charcoal, what, sorry, what was the brand? Example. Um, the HD Timberline shingles. Timberline HDZ shingles. As as said. Architectural shingles. Yeah. All right. As submitted. Can I get a second there? I'll second it. Second by uh, Dennis. All right. Uh, roll call. Melinda. Aye. Catherine. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Uh, Abigail? Aye. And I'm an I as well. All right, you're good to go. Thanks, Melanie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Appreciate good it. Good work. Yep. And we'll see you around the block. Yes. <laughs> yes. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Uh, all right, Heather, we've got another certificate extension, 155 Monument. What's that? Yes. One? I don't believe anyone is here for that one. Um, the owner is requesting an extension, I believe, until July um due to um material delays hmm. uh, what project is that that's the little bungalow yes right okay is this the first extension or have we already done one that's a good question i think Heather, it's probably the know? first one on this application I can chime in. Because I know we've had so many applications for this that, you know, got changed or whatever. I just want to make sure we're not we keep on rolling the same thing. This will be the first extension for both of that, for, for both. Okay, you know, thank you. Certificate for the house and the other one for the garage. Okay, any objections to extending the certificate? No, I think we're going to run into this frequently over the next year or so because everything is so i mean the, the we absolutely are <laughs> so delayed right and i know that they've um <laughs> they've asked for july and typically the maximum we do is six months but i think under the supply chain issues i think you know absolutely go yeah. ahead okay can i get a motion then please uh i move that we uh uh approve the extension of the certificate. Now, does that sound right? I got that backwards. Um, for 155 Monument Street uh, to July of 22. Second. Second. Uh, all right, uh, Melinda, what do you say? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Uh, Abby? Aye. Dennis? Aye. Uh, Nia? Yep. I'm an I. So that is done. Uh, officially extended. And our last bit of business on the agenda is commission membership. And this is about our potential new member. Correct, Heather? Um, I, I don't know if the commission wanted to discuss a potential new member anymore, but also um, the chair position um, that should be turning over in January. Yes. <laughs> yes <it should> be. <laughs> uh, Big shoes to follow. Here's the hat. Please put your please put your name in if you're interested. So so uh, Peter, go over who's who's coming on, who's coming, who's going off. January. What do we look like in January? Uh, I go off and Kate comes up. 
So the five people are Peter, Kate, uh, Melinda, Luis, and Paul. So those are your options. Isn't Kate taking a loop? <laughs> Is, uh... Kate's moving to Italy. Yeah, she's taking a leave of absence for six Kate's months. Kate's going to take a leave of absence. So we're actually going to have two, well, three vacancies. Well, <laughs> Kate's going to take a leave, though, right? Well, I think it depends leave, on how long her leave is going to be, whether we ask her to just step down, because I don't think it would be fair to um, potentially have quorum issues for six plus months because she can't be here. Um, right. So I think that's a discussion we need to have with her. And if she's going to step down, we need to try to find another person. Well, also, because we would be without a representative from the museum, the museum. I think what's difficult too is if if Kate steps down, you're getting a new person who steps straight into the senior role with zero experience. Well, we've talked about this in the past. Is it possible to have somebody, a junior member, switch a different switch? I think I think it would be fine to move. The associate member, um, like oh, I'm the associate member to Peter. Yes. So basically, both museum people would be gone. So to put right. a, a more experienced person in, you'd have to switch um, right. appointing authorities. And I thought that the the bylaws or whatever excluded that. Or they, yeah, they I feel died. like we've had this conversation before. We have, and it was, it was, re we really had our hands tied. It was most unpleasant. Hmm. So here's what I'd like to do as the current chair. What I'd like to do is, <clears throat> I think the way to do this is to be fair, is to interview the three eligible chairs, Luis, Melinda, and Paul. Find out if you're interested. We don't have to do it right now, Melinda, because you're the only one here. Um, if you are interested, I think then we bring that back to the commission and say, okay, so one or two or three candidates are interested and then sort of take that from there. If no one expresses interest, then, then we have to have another discussion. But I think at that point, I'll probably try to buttonhole somebody. <laughs> to serving. And the chair is supposed to be a year at a time, even though I've served for, I think I've served for two years. Two. I think you have, right? I know it feels like longer. <laughs> Don't say it because I know it, that's how it feels. Um, okay, but that so so the chair is one thing. So why don't would that sound okay? So Melinda, I'll contact you outside the meeting, and I'll talk to Luis and Paul. Um, but then, of course, the bigger issue is we need three new members. So we have one in the in the wings, Henry Moss, um, and he's. I, have we reached out to him, Heather? I, I thought you said he was he was okay with being appointed, or yeah, I just don't know what the, he did. He's we're all sort of wondering what the next like what happens now. Okay, Thank yeah. You. So if he's if he's in agreement, I think we're supposed to send at least two names to the NRC, but we can send the one we have um, and see if they push back on that. Um, but so I can send that to NRC and ask that he's appointed. Okay, and I have, I haven't followed up, Dennis, but Leland Cott I know is also potentially interested. Um, so is that going to be a little? Uh, well, I I, uh, I guess Moss is retired from the the Cott firm, so it's not right. So it's it a could little be awkward that they're both in the same architectural firm. Yeah, it so. could be a little. Then you all of a sudden a little, you have little, <laughs> little incestuous, but. Uh, um, so, so Moss has said definitely that he wants to serve. He has, yes. So he hasn't, good, good, good. He hasn't signed on. I know Kate was going to have another walk with him last time we talked. And, and yeah, no, I, out on, so. Luis reached out to him and he said, oh, I'm just waiting to hear. I thought you people were doing some paperwork thing. So, oh, good, 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 good. That's good. So okay, I think I he'll be that wrong. Um, And so we still need a couple more names and I, you know, I beat the bushes when I can, but if any of you uh, hear of anybody that uh, is willing to serve, that would be terrific. We, so, we missed an opportunity when we were talking about uh, with 615 Lowell Road, uh, because they're, so they're from very articulate people in the community that, that uh, had some really wonderful opinions uh, about what we're doing. And we should have 
I kick myself for not saying you have great insight. Why don't you put a <laughs> green card in and serve on the on the committee, uh, the commission? You'd be wonderful. Well, do we? It's actually an interesting point. Do we have a list of folks who spoke? I actually took some notes myself. There were a couple of people I was going to reach out to. Oh, well, it should be in the minutes, right, Heather? Yes, once I have them drafted. Yeah. So there are. Uh, do you think of one one guy who lives in town and that woman who was on the planning board before? I thought it was very good. Uh, you yeah. know. So I, I agree. I think that woman who was a landscape architect who yeah, was yeah, on yeah, the yeah. planning board, she spoke very eloquently. Yeah. Sounded totally on the ball, and, and she had planning board experience, which would be super. Yeah, we had to get her on board. So well, I think somebody go, needs to lasso her. I was going to say this is not the year, but if any of you were going to bump into her at a Christmas party, <laughs> we can give you permission to like pull her into a corner and say, "Hey, Brooke Whiting Cash." Yes. Say Brooke. that again. Brooke. Brooke Whiting Cash. Is her name. Brooke, well, I'm happy to reach out to Brooke. I, I meant to do it after the meeting and I didn't. So shall I do that or am I to, do I turn people off if I'm the chair? No. Don't be ridiculous. No, I think you should no. do it. Okay. And if she is interested, she should submit a green card online. <coughs> okay. Peter, you're by far the most likable of any of us. So that's <laughs> right. <You're laughs> far more pleasant than you know me outside of <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Okay. And you're certainly tasteful to please Dennis. Well, you all have to play roles. So I have to have the chimney her expert and the window person and the landscape person. And Mia, by the way, you do not have to apologize for, you, you know, everyone's entitled to an opinion. You, you, uh, I, we value your opinion on everything. Yep. Thank you. You're very kind. Okay, well, I've kept you all long enough. What time is Wait, it? Peter, Peter, can I just say one thing? I wasn't in the previous discussion. I don't believe I must have missed that meeting where you were talking about um, uh, whether someone can take a leave of absence. I actually think that's a bad precedent. I mean, I would think it'd be great if I could take the whole summer off and not attend any meetings. I don't think that's fair. I don't think it puts a burden on everybody else because if you have somebody who's not feeling well, whatever, we get close to having a smaller quorum, you know, potential pool for the quorum. Um, I don't think it's appropriate. Okay. Um, uh, Jess, is a, where would she be in her term? Is she, is she in her- Her term is up in January. So her, her term, Kate's term is up? She would, well, she would immediately go into my position. The full member. The full position. five years of my, of then my she had, position. She have the five years. Well, yes. I, I, what, the reason I got back on again is because I um, served part of someone's, uh, someone's term. So when I rotated off, I had not served the full two terms on the, um, on, um, or the full, what is it, six years, whatever it is. So that was a loophole. So she could always go off and then we could bring her back on again. Uh, to serve out an, uh, another term if she wanted to. I thought the only reason you got back home was you were considered to be fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and, have, and have pertinent historical knowledge yeah, that's right. that the that's rest debatable. of us suck at. Well, we, used, we, used a loop, we used a loophole. That's how I got back on. Oh, no, you did not. Yeah, there was, a, there was a rationale, believe it or not. So. Really a loophole. And Mark has expressed interest on, on rotating back on too. And you know, he has. Yeah, I think that's unfortunate. The town doesn't allow people to rotate back on again after a period off. There just aren't that many people around. Who want to yeah. do it? I think if we push hard enough, we, you know, we may get it approved, and maybe Mark is someone we want to think about if someone's going to rotate or come on as a full <laughs> member right away. Um, that it would be more appropriate to have a returning member that knows the ropes versus a newbie that's never served on the HDC jumping into a full member position. So and that was an argument so, for getting him yeah. back. Can we at least explore uh, what the rules are in terms of a, an associate from another authority mm -hmm. uh, crossing lines? I will find out. Please. Okay. Mind you, I'm only here for one, one, one more meeting, so I'm gonna have to shut That's up. So sad, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> sad. Oh, you'll be so happy to 
Who's going to read the minutes chirping. for us? <laughs> oh, nice. Who's going to move? Who's going to move every every one of the issues? You'll find it's very easy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, anything else? I didn't want Peter. There's only one one other thing I wanted to bring up, but it's not oh. shutters, Peter. It's not shutters. Oh, what was that color you liked? <laughs> <laughs> George Georgetown Gray, my favorite color. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh, the, the question I had, and I asked Heather about this, uh, one of the Heathers, I don't know which one, um, about the, the, when the railroad came through over by the boathouse and they cut down all the trees that screened the railroad there, mm -hmm. I'm remembering, I didn't have Heather, either Heather had time to research this, because it was a, a was, what is it called, because it was a public utility, they really didn't have to do anything and, and, uh, before, the, before the HDC, but they did it out of I guess because they thought it would be a nice thing to do. But when they cut down all those trees and expose that whole stretch, if you've been by there, of railroad track, they said they were going to replant it and they never did. And um, I maybe I may have a faulty memory, but I'm wondering if we could research that because it would be great to have some shrubs and some uh, trees planted back there to screen uh -huh. that. Uh, well, I would have to, I don't, yeah, I think that's a good idea. We just said, we have to, you know, I, maybe I'll come in, Heather, at some point and look look through the application. The, when we discussed it before, I couldn't come in, so you know. Yeah, um, yeah. But, just but, because that whole project predates me, so I'm not familiar with it yeah, at it's, all. Yeah, it's a, God. It's probably eight years ago. Something like yeah, that. Oh, not that long ago. Not that long. Is ago. it not that long ago? Okay. I don't think so. Anyway, I don't know if you guys agree, but I think it looks horrible, and I think they had to replant it. Okay. Okay. I think it's a good project to research. We're open Good. Monday through Thursday, nine to three. <laughs> you show me where the files are, I'll look it up. Just bring a bag of candy to refill the bowl on the counter, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you all for your good work on behalf of the town yet again, Heather and Heather on our behalf. Linda, thank you for being here. Lois, thank you for attending. And uh, Nia, one more meeting, it's hard to believe. <laughs> off into the sunset doesn't feel real to me <laughs> <laughs> oh lord all right well i wish you all safety and health until we meet again and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks yes thank you, thank you Peter. happy holidays to all of you thank yes. you no we've got another meeting sorry about that another one. meeting <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks, Peter. Bye. Good night. Good night. Thank you.